Staying with news around the governing party, the ANC is arguing that the public does not have the right to access uh, its CADA deployment records. The party is heading to the Supreme Court of Appeal to challenge a high court ruling ordering it to reveal its CADA deployment records to its opposition, the Democratic Alliance. The court found that the ANC's refusal to comply unlawful and dismiss, dismiss the application with costs. Meanwhile, the DA says it will continue to fight until CADA deployment is declared unconstitutional. To speak to us more on this, I'm joined by political analyst Professor De Dirk Kotzer. Uh, Prof, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. Just firstly, it's clear that the ANC is willing to fight tooth and nail uh, not to have these records come out and South Africans find out some of its secrets maybe? Yes, that is what the position of the ANC is at the moment, um, and that is that they want to uh, to oppose the, the DA, uh, the, the DA's appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal, um, because they had to hand over the court. Um, I think it's slightly different from what we've uh, seen the ANC's response was to the Zondo Commission where they dealt also with the notion of the uh, CADA deployment and the CADA deployment uh, committee of the ANC that's normally chaired by the deputy president of the ANC, um, where they gave more of an indication that they will move away from the, the formal procedures of such a committee. So I, at this stage, it is a bit of a mixed signal that we actually receive uh, from the ANC. Mm. Well, this issue obviously goes to the heart of how we are governed as a country, right? Uh, so the likelihood, I guess, uh, if, you could, if you could let me know what you think, is that they're still going to continue with many appeals. Well, there's only the uh, Constitutional Court after the Supreme Court of Appeals, so mm -hmm. that that is will provide some clarity about what is the actual situation ultimately. Um, I think what what we are seeing here is sort of different understandings of what was or is the function of the Deployment Committee of the ANC and the policy itself. Um, it obviously has been very much a key element of the ANC over all these years because like many political parties who are the governing parties, that's one of the reasons why people support them is that they want to be ultimately in positions of government or authority um, as a result of their association with these parties. So as many people have said in the past, it's not something new, it's not something unique to South Africa. But I think what is in this case different is that it has become so formalized. The fact that it is a, a committee of the ANC, that it is chaired by the uh, deputy president of, of the ANC, um, and that we know that there has been, um, that it, it can constitute theoretically at least, a very important component of any or of many appointment uh, processes. And I think that that's where it becomes in the public interest. Many will say, well, what this, this is happening in other political parties also. But the main difference is if it is a ruling party, the governing party, then it means that these decisions can have a direct effect. It is something which can be implemented. Um, where other parties, opposition parties, don't have that ability to do it. Mm. But also, uh, you know, doesn't this also go back, Prof, to uh, the argument around how the Constitution should probably change in terms of uh, allowing um, the president himself, like, so solely to make appointments in very strategic positions or even politicians be involved in some of these uh, processes um, when it comes to positions in high levels uh, in South Africa, for instance, the JSC. Doesn't this also just go back to that? Because cater deployment is not only about within the ANC itself, right? The president can also appoint people in the judici judicial service. Yes. That, that is the case. Um, and I think this is, is a good example of where the, the influence of the deployment committee uh, possibly was not so decisive. Is in the case, for example, of the appointment of judges. The same will apply also the appointment of the Chapter 9 institutions, um, like the members of the IEC uh, or the Human Rights Commission, where those appointment procedures go through Parliament. 
um, and they have the public part of the process, uh, the interviews, um, and ultimately the recommendations that are made to the president. The president has the final say in terms of the appointment, but within certain parameters that, that he can do that. The same with the dismissal of persons, for example, now uh, the public protector. Uh, and that also first will have to go through or is going through a parliamentary process. So it's not as simplistic to say it's simply a decision of the uh, deployment committee um, and then um, that is almost the final decision. But it is a very important component of it or step, many will argue. And I think that the DA concedes that point. It's not the final but a very important component of such a process. And I think one of the important points that, for example, the Public Service Act and the Constitution is saying is that people must have an equal opportunity in order to be appointed to a position. And if there's already a decision taken by an important political component that excludes some persons from, or that weighs very much against certain candidates. So there's, there's many arguments about what is the possible influence of it. Um, and I think that is what the INC tries to argue, that it is not as decisive as many people make it out to be. Mm, and I guess it also speaks volumes that President Cyril Ramaphosa at some point uh, chaired, um, you know, a, 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 an issue that the ANC was discussing when it comes to cadre deployment. And today he is uh, one of the people who's spoken out to say it cannot be declared unconstitutional. Yes, and, and I think it is partly to to protect his legacy as the chairperson of the uh, deployment committee um, mm. when he was the deputy president. Um, it yeah. was the same during the case when uh, the, the next uh, deputy president, uh, David Mabusa, he also chaired it. And I guess now it is uh, Paul Mashatili who is chairing that. Um, but they, it is to protect ultimately the ANC because mm. this is an ANC committee. Um, and it is a part of the process or part of, I would say, the, the, the advantages that a ruling party or governing party will have is the fact that they have more say um, in the appointment of senior persons um, in the public sector in general. Um, and the ANC wants to justify what they've done in the past, but at the same time maintain that advantage that they have over other political parties in the sense that they, the pub, everyone knows that mm -hmm. they will have an important say or input in uh, the appointment of many people in pub public positions. Mm. Oh, it's going to be quite dangerous and it actually is everything that just, uh, you know, connects to each other. I mean, Barbara Hogan did tell the Zondo Commission that it would be very dangerous if this committee is captured. It would mean the entire government will continue to be captured. And this speaks to what uh, Chief Justice Raymond Zondo said yesterday. He said as long as Parliament doesn't practice its oversight and show that it does, this will continue. So maybe this should be something that is also discussed in Parliament, but that is also something that's going to be a problem because uh, there's still the party line aspect of it. Thank you so much for speaking to us, uh, Professor Dirk Kotzer. He's a political analyst um, uh, speaking to us there about uh, cadre deployment and the ANC announcing yesterday through its Secretary General that it's going to actually go and approach the Supreme Court of Appeal um, after it was decided by the High Court that it has to share its records with the DA when it comes to cadre deployment.